Welcome to the Redevelopment Commission meeting for August 1st, 2022. Uh, we can start the meeting with a roll call, please. Uh, Deborah Putnam here. Sarah Ballard-Yasmin here. And Deborah Meyerson here. And staff who are here. Oh, and Miss Street. We're doing roll call. Martha. Street. Okay, and staff who are here, please. Uh, John Sony, your hand department. Larry Allen Legal. And anybody on Zoom? Jeff, oh, sorry, Jeff Underwood. Alex Crowley, Economic Sustainable Development. Okay, thank you. Um, and then first on the agenda, we have the minutes from July 18th, 2022. I'll ask for any comments from commissioners, and if there are none, ask for a motion. Uh, Deb Hutton, I move to accept the reading of the uh, accept the minutes of July eighteenth, two thousand twenty-two, as written. And I second. Your okay. name, Sarah Bauer Lee And we'll take a vote by roll call. Deb Hutton, yes. Sarah Bauer Lee yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Uh, next on the agenda. We have examination of claims, uh, July 22nd, 2022, for $268,000, 189 and 93 cents. Um, any comments from commissioners? If not, I'll take a motion to approve. Motion for me. Um, I, I, Sarah Bowerly Dansman, motion to approve the examination of claims. Deborah Hutton, second. Thank you. Um, and we'll do a vote by a roll call, please. Deb Hutton, yes. Sarah Bowerly Dansman, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. And we'll move to next on the agenda. Um, we have the examination of payroll registers from July 15th for $34,420.88. And any comments from commissioners? Uh, if not, I'll entertain a motion. Uh, Deb Hutton? Move to approve the pay registers payroll register for July fifteenth, two thousand twenty-two. And I second Sarah Bowerly Dansman. Thank you. A motion and a second, and a vote via roll call, please. Deb Hutton, yes. Sarah Bowerly Dansman, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Thank you. Um, next, we'll have a report of officers and committees. Um, Mr. Zodi. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, not a big report tonight, commissioners. Um, just we are our first agenda item under new business. We'll address this somewhat, but we are meeting as a staff in a couple of weeks about the rehab limits that I told you about earlier this spring about uh, these programs and our um, need, I believe, to exceed some of the limits on the program. So we're going to meet as a staff uh, on August 16th and talk about that. You'll be hearing more about that under our uh, first agenda item, as I mentioned. And uh, that's uh, my only uh, report item. Thank you. Mr. Allen, legal? Uh, no report, but I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Um, treasurer's report. No report, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. And uh, business development updates? My commissioners, Alex Crowley, uh, Director of Economic Sustainable Development. I have three brief updates. Uh, one is <clears throat> uh, in the Trades District, we are re-engaging with the group that is interested in redeveloping the kiln and um, we'll have some updates for you in the next uh, couple of meetings about that. Uh, they had been in a holding pattern for a while and are um, kind of coming back and re-engaging. So we'll have some updates with that. Uh, we're similarly engaged with the potential tenants of the Trades District Garage uh, commercial space um, and they're making some final decisions on that and hopefully we'll have an update for you soon. And then finally, uh, the Hopewell commercial real estate uh, request for qualification document that we sent out uh, about a month or so ago. We've gotten re responses for that. Um, frankly, they're not as, as widespread as we had hoped to see, particularly from uh, larger entities. Um, and we are gonna be making um, a preliminary uh, decision about whether to proceed with the current respondents. Um, um, uh, this week, and we'll come back to you and let you know uh, what we think the, uh, the the best plan is moving forward. So, 
Uh, those are just brief updates. Uh, please let me know if you have any questions. Great. Thank you very much. Let's move on to new business. Um, we have resolution 22-51 on the agenda. Who would like to speak to that? I'll start, uh, Madam Secretary, and then John Hewitt, our program manager, uh, is here to talk about this. We have a, another rehab for uh, owner-occupied rehab um, funded through the home program for 34-7, excuse me, three, 347 South Maple Street, um, owner-occupied rehab. The cap on these is um, 38,500. We have one that's come in a lot higher than that. Um, so John, if I could ask you to speak to a little bit about that. You've got some documentation, but just to run through some details uh, for the commissioners, if you would, please. Uh, good evening. I'm John Hewitt from the hand department. Um, in this particular uh, rehab, we uh, solicited bids from a handful of contractors, uh, as we normally do. Um, <clears throat> we only received one bid back from Golden Hands Construction, uh, who had um, previously, done, previously done work for the property owner in this house, and um, they were familiar with each other, and, and uh, she requested that he put a bid in for us, and, and he did, but the dollar amount uh, exceeded um, substantially over the 38.5, which is the normal use, um, <clears throat> and we uh, in the department kind of went back and forth about this because of the you know the the fact that our the guidelines only say 385 uh we just felt that it was time to do something rather than sit and wait for something more to happen or keep trying to ask people to give us bids that that weren't gonna um uh come through so um during the time that we've been trying to come up with a better uh plan uh the homeowner has done some of the work herself uh, as far as taking on the exterior painting of the house which uh, is substantial uh, cost-wise sometimes, and then uh, a few other items that that will, <clears throat> if, you know, uh, take the price down below what the actual bid was. But uh, at this point, we just need to move forward and get something moving because the, you know, time is mm -hmm. of the essence. So, um, the <clears throat> um, we're asking for uh, permission to exceed the 38.5 um, with, uh, I read the resolution earlier today, but I don't have it in front of me, um, so. Sure, it's, uh, yeah, just current project bid exceeds the program by uh, $15,595, so um, that's the additional amount that's requested in the resolution. Right. Okay, so yeah, that's what we're asking for, um, just simply to uh, have the ability to, to cover what we, what comes up in in the the work but i believe it will fall below that that dollar amount um, somewhat so the total dollar amount would be fifty four thousand ninety five dollars not to exceed would be the correct yeah so i can answer further questions if you've got some comments or questions from commissioners we go first you can go first well it seems like a, a huge amount like it's almost 50 percent over the allowed amount <clears throat> so is this house um, so, uh, no derogatory meant dilapidated that it's unsafe for her to live in? Not, uh, not it, well, not this? at this point, but in future, so the, the nature of the construction of this particular house is that the, the foundation walls, um, the weight of the house is borne by piers mm -hmm. through underneath the house and, uh, some of the basement has been dug out um, as many of these houses in, in the older neighborhoods do. Um, so the weight is borne by piers throughout and then some of the foundation walls are um, just clay tile as opposed to a concrete block foundation. So it's the, it's a sort of a two part issue. It's, it's not that it's, it's not bearing the weight of the house but it's also not insulating the basement in any manner. Um, <clears throat> and <clears throat> At the time that we solicited bids, um, having experts go in and review the the masonry construction of the of the basement, um, there's a small retaining wall inside the basement that, uh, again, when they when folks would dig out these crawl spaces and make them into basements, you would have uh, a wall three or four or five feet in from the basement wall of the house, and 
they would put in a small retaining wall to hold back the dirt. And one of those has fallen. So that's, oh. that's the, the initial issue is that mm -hmm. this old masonry work that may have been done by the homeowner uh, yeah. in the past yeah. has failed. And so um, upon professional masons looking at it, they said that you know uh, certain areas of the house would be better served by having uh, one whole wall of the basement completely rebuilt mm -hmm. uh, simply for, for future safety. It's not yeah. necessarily in danger of failing now, but it's not gonna last. Don't want to get there. Right. And since we're gonna be working, that's that's part of, you know, if, if we're gonna fix the, the one that did fall, we're gonna need to fix some of the other things that, that haven't. So that's sort of the nature of this particular uh, situation. Um, and and just, it's a lot of masonry work at, at that point. Yeah. I have a second question, but I'll wait till the other two ask their three last questions in the back. Um, as the newest um, commissioner, is it usual for there to only be one bid that comes back on these? projects um we've we've been struggling uh in the department finding contractors to who want to do work sometimes they don't want to work in older homes and honestly right now um everyone's remodeling and the and money is oh, <laughs> flowing like like water and uh finding someone who is willing to work on an older home as opposed to building a new home or remodeling a newer structure uh, is somewhat difficult. Uh, we've had a lot of contractors that have worked with us for years, <clears throat> but they are also aging. And one of the guys that initially said, yeah, I'll give you a bid, um, he lives directly across the street from this house. And he just, he reached the point where he realized this was gonna be more than he could handle, um, you know, and even using sub subcontractors. So um, it's, I don't want to say it's common for us to receive only one bid, but we we're seeing that throughout our the the, the rehab programs right now. Um, we'll get someone who will go out; they'll walk through and and realize that <clears throat> either they can do less work somewhere else for more money, or something of that nature. And and uh, so we have to uh, deal with that, I guess. I also have another question, Pretty but cool, yeah. I'll yeah. Um, hand it to Deborah. Um, I was just curious, do the contractors that you work with kind of, are they familiar with the cap that exists in terms of like thinking it's not worth it for me to put in a bid if I know that the cap is this and it would take obviously the extra effort to see if you could go beyond the cap? Uh, some of them are, some of them are but it, we, you guys have, have been helpful with us throughout this last calendar year because of the these very... Um, similar circumstances happening again and again where it, it's just something that needs to be done and finding uh, a contractor to um, take the harder work sometimes um, you know we we tell them right up up front you know we have we have caps in place if uh, if we need to we can go to the redevelopment commission and and uh, ask for this this particular situation to, to go beyond that cap, um, and hopefully that will happen. <clears throat> Deborah, do you have a question? Oh, we can keep rotating, that's fine. Okay. Um, probably to John, in terms of history, mm -hmm. um, the last few caps we've gone over haven't been by quite such an extravagant amount, or seemingly large amount, mm -hmm. by percentage of the cap. Um, is that a sign of the times in terms of supply chain, cost going up? Um, hard to get materials, shortage of labor, et cetera, et cetera? Or is this just a, a long, slow long-term trend or now? I would say yes to all of those things. Oh. I would say also that the distinct, that this is an owner-occupied rehab versus some of the others we've mm -hmm. done, our emergency home repair, which mm -hmm. the cap is lower. It's a $7,500 uh, yeah. cap. And so we've done some, um, some amounts in excess of that. Probably I think when we did one was $12,500. Mm -hmm. I think I talked to you all individually about the one that we were struggling with that didn't require your approval, but that we were kind of struggling mm -hmm. with, uh, you know, from a policy standpoint about, you know, how do we do this? But I think ostensibly to answer your question is yes. We've had people uh, go out and we, John and I have been to uh, community events where we've said we need contractors. If anybody's interested in exploring this with the city, please mm -hmm. let us know. We got one bite at that. 
Um, but since I've been on for the last 15 months, you know, we've consistently had the discussion in the office about it being hard to find people mm -hmm. to do the work. And I think uh, construction materials, I'm hearing from developers, they're up 30, 40%. Mm -hmm. um, so it all kind of comports with us needing to look at expanding these caps, I think. So for us, instead of, I mean, potentially we could raise the cap at another time or just leave the cap as it is, but be prepared for these higher uh, increases above cap. Yeah, what I uh, anticipate happening when we have a staff discussion about this is we either put sort of a, a temporary policy in place that will change the caps and, caps and lift them and require some system to do that and mm -hmm. put a, maybe a sunset on it that says mm -hmm. we'll reevaluate mm -hmm. this in a year or two mm -hmm. years. Construction mm -hmm. materials don't seem to be going down. Supply chain issues, depending on the supply mm -hmm. item, is are different, but... Um, I'm not sure we're going to see a huge decrease in yeah. construction materials uh, from what I'm understanding and mm -hmm. hearing. So I think what we'll look at is how much we want to lift these caps by, and then we can, as the HUD jurisdiction that we are as the city of Bloomington, we can change that policy uh, through a public process oh. like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I probably will recommend that we say, okay, we're going to reevaluate this next August or mm -hmm. just do it again and revisit it in another year. Mm -hmm. So I think that's probably the path Thank I see you. us headed down as a recommendation. Thanks. Yeah, um, so the, my question has to do with the fact that I think generally this is, you know, an important program and I totally understand as you explained the problems at the house or why it's going to cost so much money, um, but, you know, not, but only having one bid and having that bid be someone who is, has a previous relationship with the, the owner just um, as a kind of matter of process i think i would feel more comfortable especially if this is something if re, the cap issue is a issue that we're pushing up against more and more um having you know some process to deal with that so is there kind of ways in general to get second bids or 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 just kind of I mean, appraisal is not the right word, but basically cost estimates, even from someone who would not be able to do the work to just to understand, you know, is this is this costing structure kind of in line with industry standards or, you know, without a second bid, it's hard to really know. Yeah. Home so, yes, as, as part of our process, we, we have uh, a soft a software process or uh, a software um, named Housing Developer Pro. Um, this is a a, a uh, program that um, is used widely throughout the U.S. in programs similar to ours, other jurisdictions that have uh, these um, programs like this, the uh, owner-occupied rehab pro program that we have here in in our department. <clears throat> in fact, um, I went to a training in Minneapolis a couple of years ago where this uh, housing developer pro was part of the, the training process through NeighborWorks. So it's it's widely accepted as, as sort of the rehab standard uh, process. <clears throat> and part of our program uh, requirement is that we do an estimate in-house uh, with this program that generates a baseline that we then uh, can only um, deviate from to a certain percentage within um, within the, the process on each uh, program or each um, rehab itself so we're we're, we're already uh, establishing sort of a number and then this you know the the difference um, in in this case and in uh, a, a few of the cases that we've done recently, the the thirty to forty percent um, that we're seeing prices going up um, on materials and everything, uh, it, that that forty percent number is something that we're seeing totally different, but exactly uh, or. or Similar in each time. Wide. So basically, yeah, you're coming in thirty to forty percent over what the what our normal, what the yeah. house housing developer pro is saying. But you think this is because of, this is yeah it's it's of the the inflation yeah so it's a consistent step up 
Yes. Okay. So we're yeah we're we're following our guideline and using the the program that we have available. But the the forty percent is consistently showing up in these in these um, write ups that we start out with a write up that I do at my desk and with all of the items that we um, annotate in an inspection of the house, and then we're seeing the same uh, or a similar. Uh, divergence between what we can generate and what we're getting from the from the uh, contractors in the area. So does this program take into consideration the location? <clears throat> it does to a certain extent, but um, it's it's designed to be a a self-learning program. So as we get bids and we process those bids through the program, then it's going to learn that right now the contractors that are doing this type of work, whether it's replace four windows, that, that deviation is going to become part of the program. It's going to learn what we're what pricing we're getting as we... Is that what we base our ceiling on, or is that totally different? The, the ceiling has been in place, uh, the 38.5 has been in place for as long as I've been working on uh, doing rehabs. So I started out just backing up the, the two guys that did it so just across full, the board. full time. Yes. So um, how long so is that? I, uh, <laughs> the, the 38.5 has been in place since at least 2008. Oh I, my I goodness. Can <laughs> I can guarantee that. So, wow. <laughs> that's things have changed in that period yeah. of time. Yeah. yeah, yeah I mean, that's pre recession, right? I mean, oh, wow. Yes. Um, it was, yes, we've been using the same process and the same dollar amount since then. Good information to have. <laughs> and the rehabs, you know, they're so varied. You know, Sarah, before you came on, Commissioner, sorry, um, we had a person who had taken advantage of one of our city programs to help with down payment assistance, and then two weeks later, a tree fell on her house and required the complete gutting of it. And once she got it down to the stud, she realized there's there was asbestos and the whole electrical system needed to be redone. So, it, kind of, you're you're peeling these onions mm -hmm. and you're getting more and more and more, and so that then required us to come in and ask the commission to lift the cap on that, to have the electrical work done, and it's just, it's been uh, an experience sort of to see the variation in uh, the proposed repairs. And with this foundation work, I think this has been ongoing for a while, um, which leads us here. So. Yes, and uh, I did want to mention um, the previous relationship between the contractor and the homeowner on this particular project is the fact that we did a rehab on her house. Uh, I I believe it was 2005. So he was the contractor that did the work at that time. So it's, it, it's not a, it, it was a relationship of working on the home as much as yeah, the fact that they, the and, and that he lives in the neighborhood. Yes. Oh. Yeah. I mean, it, it's a, it's a, a small community and yeah. So um, yeah, not picking or anything, just kind of Thank you. That was very helpful clarification. Yeah, because he did work on that particular house previously. So is there, it sounds like there's not a, a custom of reevaluating the cap like every three years or every three to five years. And I'm wondering why not, just because it seems like it's putting people who can benefit from this program at a disadvantage if there's not a competitive bid. And obviously it's been, you know, six, 14 years. And so I'm just trying to understand like, how this is handled. <laughs> and well, I realize I, that predates you for sure, but I'm well, just... I think it's a good, I, look, these are ideas. I think we should talk about that when we meet as a staff. I think there's definitely, so our next consolidated plan for HUD is going to be for 2025. So I think as we head toward that, you know, that's a four year plan. And then we do our annual action plan every year, which we just submitted. Um, so I think in the context of that, we need to talk about if we want to do that. I, I don't think it's a bad idea. Um, so I'm open to uh, doing that. I mean, I think it would seem to help homeowners who could benefit from this program because my kind of follow-up question is, I'm wondering, again, I understand high cost of materials, fewer contractors, you know, lots of options elsewhere. But my question is, it's probably known amongst the contractor community that this cap exists and you know or or just that it's going to be harder to put in a competitive bid based on what the actual cost of time and materials is so i'm just wondering if rather since hand is about to you know evaluate the cap and ideally 
calibrate it with current costs. If it would make sense to do that first and then to reissue the, the bid, the call for bids, and hopefully get at least two in just because that's a good way of doing business. So I'm just kind of floating that idea or asking that question. Before this specific re-end or? Yeah, re I mean, re it. Yeah. again, because it only got a single bid mm -hmm. and I'm just kind of floating that idea or asking or, you know, just. Of course, if you have further damage while we're doing yeah. that. Right. No, I, I understand. So I'm not, I certainly don't want a, this suggestion to be at the cost of, you know, the person who needs imminent re yeah. rehab for their home. It's just, again, trying to kind of deal with a single bid mm -hmm. situation. But it's hard to get people to do anything. Right now. Okay, so that may be, you know, a, a mitigating factor. They're all busy. Yeah, I would, and I think Deborah, your point also about how this could um, help make it more attractive to bid right. also means that that can might help, you know, bring contractors would be able to then, you know, hire more people, and it could help sort of smooth out the supply chain issue also on the talent side as well. Just this. Uh, the materials. I think uh, probably on this one, I think this particular resident's been waiting a little while on this one. And I would, I might recommend we go ahead, if you're willing to consider this, lifting this cap, we go ahead on this. Mm -hmm. But we do consider what, as as we, re, we revisit the policy, housing developer pro is recommended, or it's required, excuse me, and then we get at least one other bid. We've sort of used in the past the housing developer pro as not a bid, but a, just a just a backup, a reinforcement of what we get. As John said, to set the baseline. So, um, so I think we can maybe talk about that as a staff to see if we'd want to do any sort of minimum or anything like that. I might recommend this time that we go ahead and do this one if you're considering lifting it, because I, I worry. Uh, we we wanted to get it on this agenda, I think, because we got it sort of at a place we thought it was ready to move ahead. And so I think we should probably I would recommend we do that um, and then talk about the rest okay. as a staff. I'm just curious. The housing development pro estimate is that done by project. Like, can you plug in the scope for this project and then get an estimate from the app as to say that's what this would cost? And I'm just curious about at least that comparison, understanding that you were yes. also noting it's consistently under <laughs> estimating yes, the actual yeah, bids. There's the the work write up that the original bid was based on um, came from my write up in housing developer pro. Okay. So, um, the, when, um, when I, as I said, uh, Chris Sturbaum of Golden Hands asked for um, his masonry subcontractor to come out and do a bid, they noted a couple other things that, that were in need of being done for, for the continued safety of the house, not that they said it was going to fall down today or anything like that but it's you know they are they're professionals and I'm I'm a guy who you know I, I've worked in the trades and I, I'm a certified building inspector but um, somebody that that is in you know the, in with the shovel and the mortar and all that is going to have a better um, idea of the the nitty-gritty that needs to be done on that that particular foundation that I do um, with sort of a general knowledge situation. So I'm, they pointed out a couple other things that needed to be done. And um, so yeah, those, all that stuff can be plugged into Housing Developer Pro and we could come out with the, you know, the baseline that's gonna, again, tell us that we're 30 or 40% off. Okay. If, that, if that answers your question, I'm not certain that it does. I wasn't sure at what stage the Housing Development Pro estimate was implemented you know like if you do it's, it up it's front, the first thing we do okay and then you get but as you're saying you know obviously people who go and actually look around because they're making a bid that's going to be what they right you know yeah. get paid for the work and so just curious how it compared even though it was right and different. yeah the so our guidelines uh tell us that we have to be within uh is it 10 or 15 percent of of the bid for it to even be considered um valid and yet none of them are doing that because okay. of the, the nature of this program being uh, sort of not outdated but sort of so supposed to be help self learning uh, or self teaching so that it updates the pricing as we receive more bids. Okay. Um, 
I'll move to approve resolution 2251 as Sarah Bauer lead answerman. Do we want to take public comment oh. uh, before the motion? Manager. Yeah, I think that's this is the moment to do that before we ask for a motion to okay. consider. So, is there any public comment either in person or via Zoom? Anyone by Zoom, feel free to put it in the chat. I don't see anybody with their hand raised at this time. Okay, seeing none, um, uh, we'll entertain a motion, please. And Sarah Bauer Dansman, I um, move to approve resolution 2251. Jeff Hutton, second. Uh, we have a motion and a second. Uh, we'll vote by a roll call, please. Jeff Hutton, yes. Sarah Bauer, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Motion approved unanimously. Thank you. Um, next on our agenda, we have resolution 22 52. And who would like to speak to that? Hello, Patrick Durgis, Engineering Department, uh, covering for Roy Aiden as he is out of the office for a few days. Um, <clears throat> the B Line project will extend the existing B Line trail uh, west of Adams to Fountain Drive, which is about 600 feet paralleling the uh, existing railroad line, then travel north on Fountain uh, to Crescent. The project will realign the intersection at Fountain and Crescent, making the uh, turn from Fountain onto Crescent the dominant move after the uh, closure of uh, the crossing at I-69 for Fountain Drive. And then uh, the trail will continue along Crescent and tie into the uh, trail that was recently constructed as part of the 17th Street project. Uh, for that, uh, since this is a federally funded project, uh, we must have uh, INDOT certified inspection for this project and uh, went out for proposals on this and uh, selected uh, the high scoring firm, which was Crossroad Engineers. Um, after negotiations, the, uh, the not to exceed amount, which this is, uh, all of our inspection contracts are by hourly, um, so um, by payroll and then also by the uh, services provided. So if there's uh, material testing or other things of that nature. Um, so the not to exceed amount of uh, $257,410. Uh, and if I remember correctly, a portion of this, no, no portion of this is federally funded. My apologies. Uh, does it have federal funding? Does not. Okay. Uh, the construction does, but the uh, construction inspection does not. Okay, thank you. Uh, available for any questions. Thank you. Comments or questions from commissioners? Any, seeing none from commissioners, any comments or questions from the public? On Zoom? Okay. Seeing none, I will entertain a motion. Dale Putnam, I move to approve resolution 2252. That's written. And Sarah Bauer, Lee I second. Thank you. We have a motion and a second. A vote by a roll call, please. Dale Putnam, yes. Sarah Bauer, Lee Deborah Meyerson, yes. Uh, unanimous approval. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next on our agenda is Resolution 22 53. And who would like to speak to this? Hi, Patrick Dirks again, Engineering Department. Uh, this is uh, the same project that I described earlier. Uh, this is uh, the fourth addendum for the design contract for this project. Um, this addendum addresses uh, some additional design work required for a sewer uh, extension. The sewer extension was determined to be necessary uh, because the project will impact the uh, septic field of a home along the project. 
and then also the private force main that we're actually uh, replacing uh, also fell under a retaining wall on the project. And so we were extending CBU's uh, gravity sewer and replacing that force main up to a certain point of the project. Um, so this is for additional services for that. And then this also um, uh, shifts some money that was still available in uh, allowances for the project to address uh, some right-of-way issues that we've come across. Uh, there are two gaps in the deeds. Basically, uh, as you laid everything out, the deeds uh, developed a gap of land in between them uh, at two separate locations. And, uh, and so this covers uh, additional services. Uh, the services were based upon the number of parcels originally. The gaps create additional parcels, basically. So uh, this uh, shifts money um, for that. And so this addendum to address the, uh, the sewer extension is, uh, is for $7,647. Uh, bring, oh. I was just gonna quickly go ahead finish your, I just, I have a correction whenever you're done, Patrick. Oh, My apologies. Okay. Uh, I was just going to say, bring in the grand to, total to uh, $891,364. Uh, maybe one quick quick clarification. Is it um, $891,364 or 46 according to your documents? Yes, that is correct. 46 46. Okay. I would also just point out, commissioners, there are spelling errors in the resolution. Um, at least two. One is for the word sanitary and the one, two, three, four. The sixth whereas clause, also the word 90, uh, is misspelled. So I would uh, encourage you to um, move as, a, as amended to correct those spelling errors in the resolution so that we can have accuracy for that. Thank you. I'm just curious, how do you resolve the gaps in the deeds? Does that require additional land acquisition? Um, so there's a few different ways to do it. Uh, the way that we have selected is to uh, is to treat the gaps uh, as if they are owned by both parties. Um, and then the party, uh, both of them would then be able to, uh, to seek uh, to close that gap. Um, the amount of land is extremely small, so the price tag is is probably less than project delays and uh, legal cost. Thank you. Any other questions or comments from commissioners? I guess with those gaps, are you likely to get the answer? Yes, you can have it. Uh, like it's not going to hold up the whole project. We don't foresee that. Uh, both of the property owners on either side. Uh, Except for w one gap, we the right of way already existed, mm -hmm. so we have not approached that property owner previously. But for uh, the other three property owners, uh, we have already worked with them to purchase the other right of way. So we do not foresee that being an issue. Mm -hmm. Any other questions from commissioners? If not, we'll go any public comment. Seeing none on Zoom or in the room, I'll take a motion, please. Okay. Um, I move to approve resolution 2253 as amended to correct spelling errors. Uh, Deb Hutton, second. Thank you. Got a motion, a second, and a vote by a roll call, please. Deb Hutton, yes. Sarah Bowerly, Anthony, yes. Deborah Meyerson, yes. Uh, approved unanimously. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Mr. Gregory's. Um, okay, um, we are now on to the end of new business. Any other business general discussion? Uh, Madam Secretary, I think uh, Jen Pearl from the Bloomington Economic Development oh, that's right. Corporation is here and w wanted uh, wanted a word with the RDC. Uh, if uh, the commission will allow it. Welcome, please come on up. All right, thank you so much. Um, Good to see everyone. My name is Jen Pearl, and I'm the president of the Bloomington Economic Development Corporation. We're a nonprofit that serves all of Monroe County in fostering economic development, which is conditions for prosperity across the community. So um, I came today to uh, essentially share an invitation to any members here or members of the public, if you live or if you work in Monroe County, uh, this invitation is coming to you. 
Uh, we have a new initiative called the Economic Vitality Project, and that is an initiative where we're convening people across the community to essentially say, what are the biggest economic development challenges we're facing um, that we want to focus on together across sectors, across different parts of the community? Number two, what are the efforts that are currently existing to address those things and how do we better support those existing efforts? And then number three, how do we fill in the gaps? Um, so we are working with a facilitator um, named Fourth Economy. And um, if you go to our website, bloomingtonedc.com backslash EVP, um, you can see sort of updates on the project. Um, and there's also an engagement survey on the website that people can fill out. Um, there are opportunities to get involved on working groups, um, take part in um, focus groups on different topics, um, as well as just receive general updates. Um, if you've already filled it out, um, we're working on a newsletter that'll be coming out to kind of provide updates to you. And it's an open invitation to anyone across the community. Um, also, if you know of anybody who might be interested, uh, please pass this along to them because we want really broad community representation at the table. Um, while we're trying to address these topics. Um, the topics that we are looking to take a deep dive on are things like workforce, housing, infrastructure, jobs creation, and then quality of life, and many things fall under that, um, you know, everything from transit to childcare, et cetera. What's the timeline for this project? The timeline is we did um, some of our public kickoff in June, um, we've been doing interviews and uh, that engagement survey opened up in July. Um, working groups will be uh, continuing in September and then really by December or winter, um, what we're going to come out with is a co-owned community plan with different partners who own different pieces of this with implementation in 2023. Great. Thank you. Yeah. Could you repeat slower? Yes. The website. Yes. Bloomington EDC, and EDC is like Economic Development Corporation, dot com backslash EVP. EVP like Economic oh, yeah. Vitality Project. Make sure it's in the chat. We'll also make sure it's part of the minutes as well. Thanks. Yeah. Thank you. And we really hope that anyone at any part of the community would really like to have at the table and hear your voices. Thank you for joining us. Yeah, well, thank you. Thanks Appreciate so it. Anything additional for general discussion this evening? Seeing none, um, I will take a motion to adjourn. So moved, Deb Hutton. And second, Sarah Bowerly. Yes. Sounds good. So adjourned. Thank you.